Hello and welcome to another exam mini video. My name is Fisher Steins and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into the Marvel Cinematic Universe to better understand developmental pathways and developmental networks in genetics. So to begin, I'd like to introduce you to a few main characters in the new series, WandaVision. So the first character here is Director Hayward, and he's sort of a, a side figure in, in the SWORD organization, but his primary function is to find a new super weapon to battle, you know, enemies in the in the next era, you know, sort of after these major superheroes are gone. And his super weapon is Vision. So his primary goal is to sort of resurrect Vision and get him to come back. So we can see that Hayward is activating and he's promoting um, the presence of Vision here. Now, Vision is deeply in love with Wanda, and these two are sort of soulmates in, in, in the show. Um, so Vision is also going to promote and activate Wanda. Now, Wanda has a very important role to play in that she is the one who's actually going to end up battling the, the evil force in the show, which is represented here by Agatha Harkness. So as long as Wanda is around and is able to block Agatha, we prevent evil from taking over. And this is very important uh, in the context of the show. And this is sort of our phenotype, if you will, for preventing this evil thing from taking place. Um, so what happens then if we remove one of these variables? So uh, for Dr. Hayward, he is going to be unaffected, basically. He's, he's still going to do his thing. Um, but vision is not going to be created, and everything downstream of that is going to be affected. So vision goes out. Uh, Wanda is no longer being promoted and activated. And since she's not being activated, Agatha is allowed to do her thing unchecked. So here, evil would prevail, and this would be very, very bad in the series. Um, so if we had a double mutant here, um, where um, Director Hayward is not functioning properly and where Wanda is not functioning properly, we'd have the same result, but for a different reason. So Hayward is not activating vision, and that takes place. Wanda then is not being uh, activated, and she's not present, and she's dysfunctional as well. So Agatha is not being able to be blocked. And for that reason, evil is allowed to prevail and we have a problem in our organism. So how does this sort of crazy example translate into the context of real genetics? Well, all of these developmental pathways are constantly happening where one gene might lead to another and you might have the either you know, promotion or the activation or translation of a new protein that's important or perhaps you're trying to repress bad ones. An example of this is gonna be RN, uh, RNA interference. In this one, we're looking at miRNAs. Basically, we'll have these double stranded regions of the RNAs that are identified. They're diced up into small pieces, and these pieces bind to this risk complex. And then this sort of complex as a whole is going to inhibit translation. And this might be an example where one thing leads to another, and you have um, this inhibition of translation. Uh, here are my works cited. Thank you very much.